Yes, so um, it's, yeah. Ethereum is so great because with this, uh, with, with Ethereum, we now have this awesome Turing complete world computer. And because it's Turing complete, it can do anything uh, other programs can also do. And this means smart contracts can now verify Solidity source code by just recompiling it. They can analyze the stock market. They can verify state transitions in private chains, which means you have chains that connect to each other. They can evaluate neural networks, and thus you have uh, artificial intelligence on the blockchain. And this in turn means that smart contracts can improve their own code by analyzing it. And we can even do uh, fully homomorphic, privacy-preserving, elliptic curve, CK snark mixer stuff. Woo. But yeah, I mean, you all know that this is not really true because uh, these smart contracts are really expensive and they need a lot of gas. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, OK. <laughs> so um, yeah, these tasks are too expensive and they won't fit into a block. And then the, the usual thing what you do is you, you go off chain. This means uh, there's a task giver, a smart contract that asks um, some program to be executed. And then there are workers which register uh, with this system and uh, compute the solution off chain. And uh, yeah, the, the problem is uh, if two workers submit different solutions, then you some, somehow have to uh, decide which is the correct solution. And the easiest thing to do there is to just uh, take the majority solution. So uh, the solution that has most uh, workers submitting it. Um, that is not really uh, stable. There are easy ways to exploit that, especially uh, if it's easy to add new workers. And the question is, can we do better? And uh, this uh, now comes to the, the TrueBit project, or in general, uh, interactive verification of off-chain solutions or off-chain computations. And it's a cooperation with Loy Lu and Jason Teutsch, who wrote a paper about that. Loy will also give a talk, I think, tomorrow about Oyente. And uh, the, the general framework was already published in 2011, so this general interactive uh, verification mechanism. But we want to uh, take this mechanism and, and put it on the blockchain and add a proper uh, crypto economic incentivization to, uh, yeah, to do that. And the, the idea is to um, achieve uh, similar trust levels as direct on-chain computations uh, would would do, but at a fraction of the cost. Um, so this is basically about uh, a way how to scale the blockchain because you can take expensive computations off-chain. Um, this is so, as in all these approaches, we've also seen it in the previous talk uh, about state channels. It always has a, a uh, yeah a a privacy component too, but it's not 100% safe. So we're focusing on uh, uh, the scalability here mostly. And how does Tribit work? So we still have the same uh, framework where we have a task giver that uh, publishes a task and then workers submit solutions. But now we don't take the majority solution. Instead, uh, we allow solutions to be challenged. So if two workers do not agree on the solution, then the, uh, yeah, the so-called verification game starts. And the verification game is built in a way so that the honest actor will always win it. There's, there's no way that the honest actor uh, can lose it. And uh, no, not yet, please. <laughs> and so it's also really cheap because the, the only on-chain part is that uh, you only have to store hashes. And then at the end of the whole process, you have to do a tiny computation step. And yeah, this means uh, because the, the, the honest actor always wins, you don't have a 51% attack, but a 100% attack. You have to, uh, all the, the workers have to collude for it to fail. Um, there's a small fine print, although, so we have to assume that uh, transactions are processed in time, which means we need a censorship resistant blockchain, which is not, and we need a, an upper bound on the, uh, on the delay for a transaction to be processed. Okay, how does the verification game work in detail? Uh, let's assume we have a computation with one million steps, 
And at each of these steps, uh, the parties can be a Merkle tree of the full memory. And then they, okay, they don't have to compute it at every step, but at certain steps, sorry. And it works as follows. So, um, uh, slow, slowly, please. <laughs> So we have uh, step one and step uh, one million. They have the same input, but different outputs. And then, we, then the smart contract takes a look at the, at the middle point and asks again for the root hashes. And next, please. And there we see the root hashes are still the same. And what we're looking for is a single step where uh, both parties agree on the previous root hash, but they disagree on the next root hash. And because they agree here on the middle point, but they disagree at the end, then uh, the, uh, in, this, um, yeah, in the right half, there must be such a point. So we again ask in the middle of the right half. And there they disagree, and, yeah, and so on. We again ask in the middle of the, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and this continues a bit. And in this case, uh, yeah, we found a, a certain step where the previous root hash is the same, but the, the uh, following root hash is different. Next slide, please. Yeah, and it, it, so in this case, it took 20 rounds for one million uh, steps. Um, and after we have found this single step, uh, all the information is published to the smart contract. Uh, and it verifies this single step. So access to memory is used uh, via, via Merkle proofs, of course. So this is really, really cheap. OK. Um, so 20 rounds sounds, uh, so 20 rounds in comparison to 1 million steps sounds uh, really good. But uh, the problem is that we have to do this on chain. It does not work off chain because uh, the two parties have conflicting incentives. And this means it takes at least 20 blocks. Um, but there are techniques to further reduce this. And more importantly, uh, we have this verification game. But uh, because of the fact that the honest actor will always win it, it will never be played. At, so at least, so um, if you lose it, you, of course, have to pay a fine. You, have to, to, you, lose, you lose your deposit. And uh, so there's a great disincentive to, to even try it. I and mean, you can, of course, try it, but it will cost a lot of money. Um, yeah, specific numbers. Uh, if you take a look at a one hour computation on a four gigahertz processor, you get roughly 14 times 10 to the 12 steps. And uh, if there's a disagreement, then uh, you there's a protocol that finds the cheater in 10 rounds, and in each round, you have roughly 600 bytes of messages. Um, yeah, OK, next slide, please. So how do you practically use it? Um, the idea is that uh, the tasks are implemented in, in C, C++, or Rust, so anything that can be compiled via LLVM. And we use a special backend called LANI. Um, the reason is that LANI is a very, very simple virtual machine, or yeah, not a virtual machine, but a very, very simple machine. And it's easy to implement uh, this single step uh, as a smart contract. And so if you have this task, then, uh, so it, then you kind of post the source code of it uh, into the system, and you provide a fee. And then uh, workers uh, can compile it to LANI, execute it, uh, uh, and um, yeah, submit the, their solutions. Um, a potential bonus that will come out of the system is that we can have Swarm as a real, actual file system for smart contracts. So you can have smart contracts and uh, yeah, just regularly open files, uh, read and write, and so on. OK, I think there's one more slide. Yes, so the, the current state of implementation of this project is that, uh, yeah, we have some proof of concept code. Um, we're now working on the, uh, the actual incentive and penalty structure. Um, and we're looking for some research grants in that area. And uh, for the implementation, we, we successfully applied to Wangsang for a Wangsang blockchain labs grant. Uh, thank you for that. 
Um, and yes, so that's the progress so far. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs>